We seem to be trapped in a fragile and volatile economic recovery. Both shippers and carriers are struggling with what to expect in the year to come. At the recent Halifax Port Days event, I had the opportunity to engage with shipper, carrier and 3PL executives in an insightful discussion about the challenges and opportunities for 2013. I began by asking them what they see as the main competitive pressure shaping their business approach to the new year. Let's hear what they had to say, starting first with LCBO's Nick Nanos. From a pressure perspective, I think uh, there's a lot that's going on in the world. We're a, we're a retailer, an importer, that, that brings in product from 80 different countries. So what happens elsewhere has a huge impact on, mm -hmm. our, uh, on our business. Um, when we look at Europe, which are quite honestly are strategic uh, countries for us, you know, the Portugal's and the Spain and the France and the Italy, um, what's going on over there with um, certainly in terms of give, from, a, from a labor unrest in terms of how that impacts our ability to move freight and get the product here, that's going to have an impact on us moving forward and it's something we aren't taking very lightly. The U.S. is in an election year. Again, we get a large amount of uh, inventory from the U.S., so that's a pressure that we're really focusing on because um, it'll have a big impact. Um, recently, the Middle East, yet again, you know, we've closed the one embassy in Iran and other ones intermittently for days here and there. What's that going to do to fuel and how that's going to drive up our costs? And then we start looking at, you know, within our own market, and what's going on in Ontario. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of labor unrest in Ontario, we've, whether it's in the public sector, whether mm -hmm. it's with the unions, the CAW, one, one's just settled, and I guess the other will hopefully follow suit. We've got an NHL strike going on, which is going to have a huge impact to me personally. I mean, no, it's going to have an impact to the organization on the wholesale part. Yeah, and that's point. a big, you know, it's 17 to 18 percent of our sales. So we're looking at that as having a huge impact on us. Um, someone didn't turn the taps off, and we're getting all these extra charges in Montreal. So, uh, you know, from a shipping perspective, there's, there's other costs that we're incurring. So the year ahead, uh, you know, it, it, it looks uh, there's going to be definitely a lot of challenges that we're going to have to face. For CN's Keith Reardon, it was more a question of taking what the economy is giving right now and trying to find a way to outperform those circumstances. We can only do as good as what the economy gives us. Um, the, the shippers, uh, our customers that uh, give us their precious freight, um, we, you know, we find out from them what the, uh, what the economy is going to bring us and, um, and we make adjustments to our transportation services to accommodate that. To, uh, to try and provide um, open gateways for them, improve the, um, uh, the speed at which we move their freight. So our challenges are more to take what the economy gives us and figure out how we can overperform or outperform uh, those circumstances. UPS has relationships with many shippers, so I asked Jim Ramsey, one of its vice presidents, if there is a clear pattern emerging as to what will drive supply chain related decision making in 2013. A clear pattern is uh, is always is always hard to find, but building on a, some of the comments earlier, uh, what we see companies talking about really coming down to uh, four things. What, one is the Canadian dollar, and uh, what trend it has been on for the last while, and what that does for uh, for the Canadian exporter, and particularly uh, exporting to the U.S., which is the second side of that one, is is what's going on in the U.S. economy uh, for. Um, for driving those exports, 70% of our exports, of course, still go to the U.S. to uh, for uh, as, as part of the, uh, that big picture for where Canadian companies focus when they look outside of Canada. Europe, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on with Europe that Im that have an impact on supply chains and capacity and whether or not uh, capital is going to be available and, and and how people are going to finance growth in the uh, in the future. And then the final one that that's really started to um, come up a little bit has been the potential slowdown in growth of emerging markets. Uh, certainly uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, the, the BRIC countries, you throw South America, or sorry, South Africa in there for the BRICs. Uh, you know, you see a few stumbles this year in, in those economies. And, and what that's creating for, uh, for companies I talk to is a high level of uncertainty. And, and with that uncertainty comes a whole lot of caution. And, and so the caution manifests itself in a couple of ways. One is they're not willing to uh, invest as much. And secondly, what they're really driving towards, and, and we were chatting about this a little bit before the, the session began, being razor thin on inventory levels. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things where the, in the way that's manifesting itself in the transportation world is we're seeing smaller orders, quite often some of the same volumes we've seen in previous years, but broken up into smaller quantities. 
And what that comes down to is people not willing to take the risk for the big order, not knowing how quickly they're going to be able to sell that through, mm -hmm. or producing ahead of time, not knowing how quickly they can push that outside of the country. So that's one, uh, the one aspect of it. The other, uh, the other thing that I see as a, uh, as, as I think a, a great pattern, and, and certainly um, you know Canada's well positioned for this, is looking outside of Canada's borders, not only for new markets for our. Uh, manufacturing, and believe it or not, Canada still does have a manufacturing industry, despite what you read in the media, and uh, also for our imports. So it ties in with the complexity because what, you, what I see a lot of uh, people having to look for are new sources, new ways of sourcing, having to do with infrastructure in countries they're not used to, as well as a whole lot of caution about how much they're willing to invest to, uh, to get into that. Stay tuned to future episodes of TMTV for more insights from the Port Days panel. And also look for the leaders' reports on our website, ctl.ca.